Imagine a weapon that fires at the speed of light, costs less than a kettle of tea to fire, and slices through a threat before it knows it exists. Beat, the music swells. Tonight on ATO Future Hub, we pull back the curtain on Britain's most talked about defense secret turned reality. The Dragonfire Laser System, a cutting-edge directed energy weapon that has already marked important milestones and could rewrite how wars are fought at sea and on land. Open with the scene, cold Hebridean test range, a turret mounted with glass fiber arrays, operators watching through electro-optical sights. The shot is clinical, almost intimate. A beam lances out, invisible to the naked eye, but its effect is brutally obvious, a UAV twitches, fragments, falls. This is not fiction, this is the first UK high-power firing trial that demonstrated a laser engaging aerial targets, a milestone the Ministry of Defence and Industry Partners put on record in 2024. We're starting with the basics because the tech is deceptively simple in concept and devilishly complex in execution. Dragonfire is a laser-directed energy weapon, an LDEW, being developed by a UK consortium led by MVDA with Leonardo, Kinetic and DSTL. It mounts a beam director, electro-optical sensors and an imaging track laser in a stabilized turret, and uses advanced beam combining techniques through many glass fibers to produce a single, highly concentrated laser beam. Reported figures place the demonstrator in the roughly 50 kilowatt class, powerful enough to burn through light skin and disable drones, and to disrupt or defeat some types of mortar rounds and other medium speed threats in tests. But crucially, many performance specifics, exact ranges and classified defeat profiles, are kept closely held. If you're wondering about cost and logistics, one of the Dragonfire headlines you'll have seen is the promised economy of use. Unlike a missile that costs hundreds of thousands or even millions of pounds, firing this laser is measured in pence and pounds. The mod has described the running cost of a 10-second burst as roughly the price of running a heater for an hour, commonly cited around £10 per engagement, a figure that invites strategic rethinking about how navies and armies manage their layered defenses. So what's inside the box? Think of the interior like a high-precision surgical theater. Behind the armored dome sits the beam combining assembly, dozens of fiber laser modules coherently combined to focus maximum energy on a tiny spot. There's an imaging and tracking stack, high-resolution electro-optical cameras, thermal images, and a lower-power tracking laser that keeps the optics locked on a target while the main beam does the work. Cooling systems, extensive heat exchanges and fluid loops, remove the thermal waste. Power electronics and control racks feed the laser modules with tightly regulated current, while a turret stabilizer and fire control computer take inputs from shipboard sensors and the weapon's own trackers to steer the beam with millimeter accuracy. All of this is encased in a hardened, weather-sealed housing designed to survive the salty, corrosive conditions at sea. Power is the elephant in the room. A high-energy laser needs sharp bursts of power that normal ship generators cannot always supply without affecting other systems. The UK has explored a flywheel energy storage system, FES, developed from racing and aerospace spin technologies. These flywheels store rotational energy and discharge it in short, intense bursts to feed the laser, smoothing the load on the ship and reducing the risk presented by high-energy battery packs. That's why you'll hear naval engineers talking about power management almost as much as about optics, the weapon is as much a power engineering challenge as a laser one. Armor, in the conventional sense, isn't what Dragonfire needs, it's the turret and housing resilience that matters. Expect rugdized composite skins, anti-corrosion coatings and shock mounts to isolate the optical chain from vibration. The laser doesn't need physical ammunition, but it does need protection from shrapnel, small arms fire, and the elements, the turret's design balances low radar cross-section, thermal management and survivability if the ship comes under attack. And because the beam follows line of sight, the platform's own sensors and countermeasures must be layered, Dragonfire is best as part of an integrated defensive web, not a lone savior. What about mobility and platforms? 
Initially, the Royal Navy is the launch customer. Trials have been conducted with the intent of fitting Dragonfire to Type 23 and Type 45 sized warships, and the mod accelerated plans so that an install could appear as early as 2027 on multiple vessels. In March 2025 the program received further funding to fit four warships with the system by 2027, signaling a definite move from demonstrator to operational capability. There are also conceptual plans for land vehicles and even future aircraft demonstrations. The technology is scalable in principle, though power and cooling constraints increase dramatically as you try to miniaturize. Let's talk firepower in plain terms. Laser weapons don't fire bullets or splinters, they deliver concentrated energy that heats, melts or disrupts the target. Against drones and small craft, Dragonfire can blind senses, burn through composite skins, or ignite fuel. Against mortar and rocket threats, it can heat and deform casings or fuzzes to render a round inert, though defeat of kinetic threats depends on transit time, size and materials. The engagement is effectively immediate, offering a near-instant response that complements radar and kinetic interceptors. The key metric is time to effect rather than sheer kinetic force. There's a strategic angle here too. Because a lasers, ammunition, is electricity, the logistics tail changes, fewer resupply ships, fewer costly interceptors, and a different calculus for fleet sustainment. That's why the modern industry guys repeatedly emphasize the long-term cost savings, even as upfront development and procurement are heavy. Tender notices and procurement plans in 2025 suggested initial buys in the hundreds of millions of pounds range for the first few units, evidence that while the per shot cost is low, fielding an integrated, hardened laser system across a fleet requires serious investment. Recent notices indicated plans for up to £240 million for the first two Dragonfire units, highlighting the balance between capability and cost. How would Dragonfire actually be used in a fight? Picture a layered defense bubble around a task group, long-range radars cue interceptors and missiles, medium-range gun systems and missiles engage larger threats, and Dragonfire provides precise, economical close-in defense against swarms of drones, fast attack craft and certain incoming munitions. Because the laser travels at light speed and can be rerouted quickly, operators can prioritize targets by risk and cost, choosing the laser for inexpensive neutralization and preserving missiles for higher value interceptions. In contested littoral environments, think crowded coastlines, drones in complex clutter, Dragonfire's low collateral profile is attractive, where a missile might send shrapnel flying into civilian areas, a laser offers a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. No system is flawless. Weather and atmosphere matter, rain, fog, dust and sea spray scatter and absorb the beam, reducing effective range. The weapon is line of sight limited, it cannot see targets behind obstacles. Directed energy can also be defeated by reflective materials or active countermeasures. And because much of the high-level performance data remains classified, commanders will have to plan carefully around known limitations, integrating Dragonfire with sensors, decoys and other effectors to build resilience against complex attacks. What's next? The modular nature of Dragonfire's architecture lends itself to continuous upgrades. Beam power can be ramped up as laser diode and fiber technologies improve, Tracking and engagement algorithms will benefit hugely from machine learning driven target selection, and integration with ship power systems like advanced FES, improved cooling, and smarter energy orchestration will boost operational tempo. Future variants might be compacted for armored vehicles or scaled for land-based air defense hubs. There's talk in open sources about international cooperation and technology spin-offs already informing allied programs, this is the sort of defense tech that propagates quickly through friends and partners' channels. Let's close with the human picture. Sailors and soldiers still stand at the heart of this technology. Operators will be trained to make split-second risk assessments, to fuse sensor data with rules of engagement and to understand when precision energy is the right tool. The engineers who maintain the systems will require new skill sets, high power optics, 
fiber maintenance, thermal engineering, the navies will need to rethink spare parts, maintenance cycles and training pipelines in the years ahead. So what is Dragonfire's true price? If the question is per shot, the answer is surprisingly small, a handful of pounds or tenner per engagement, depending on burst length. If the question is program cost and procurement, the numbers climb, into the low hundreds of millions for initial buys and system installs. The difference between those two figures is the strategic bargain the UK is chasing, high upfront investment for potentially outsized operational savings and new defensive options. End on the cinematic beat, a sunset over a carrier, the turret silhouetted, as a narrator lowers their voice. Dragonfire doesn't belong in a movie. It belongs on the deck, on the battlefield, in the computation rooms of tomorrow's forces. It changes the game by changing the maths, cost per kill, speed of engagement, and the nature of defensive architecture. But it also brings new questions, about weather, about rules of engagement, about escalation, that nations will need to answer as they put light itself into the arsenal. This is a technology that has already moved from science lab to demonstrator to operational planning in a few short years. If Dragonfire meets expectations, the age of directed energy on operational ships may be closer than many imagined, a silent, invisible hand in the layered defense of the fleet. If you like this deep dive into Dragonfire and want more breakdowns of future military tech, the ships, the tanks, the aircraft and the secrets behind them, hit the like button, tell us what platform you want us to cover next, and make sure you subscribe.